Hello, my name is Mike Morales, and I would like to welcome those of you attending on kayaking at Channel Islands National Park. Kayaking is a great way to see the rugged coastline and to see some of the wildlife that we have at Channel Islands. Kayaking requires uh, your personal responsibility to help protect those resources and also to protect yourself while you're out on the water. It's important that you have a safe kayaking adventure while at Channel Islands National Park. Kayaking within Channel Islands National Park is at your own risk. You'll be in open ocean conditions, without safe harbor, and without lifeguards present. Choosing the kayak in this remote wilderness setting comes with personal responsibility for your own safety. This is not intended as a instructional presentation. However, to help you have a safe kayaking experience while you're at the Channel Islands National Park, we would like to cover a few topics with you, including recommended and required safety equipment, sea and weather conditions, use of the buddy system, some basic skills, and finally, wildlife viewing etiquette. Using the proper safety equipment is essential to having a safe and enjoyable kayaking experience. All paddlers must have a life jacket. A life jacket will provide emergency flotation if you get separated from your kayak. Helmets are highly recommended. A helmet will protect you from falling rocks or other unplanned encounters with the rocky coastline. You should always wear a helmet when paddling near cliffs or in sea caves. Water temperatures at the Channel Islands remain cold throughout the year. It is recommended that you wear a wetsuit for your comfort and safety. A wetsuit becomes essential to your survival should you end up in the water for any extended period of time. Also recommended is some form of footwear, either wetsuit booties, sandals, or an old pair of tennis shoes to protect your feet from the rocks. Additional recommended safety equipment includes a VHF radio or some type of signaling device should you need to attract help. A tow line and a personal first aid kit can also be useful should you or a fellow kayaker need assistance. Having the proper equipment for the local conditions is just the beginning. You must also take into consideration the weather and sea conditions before setting out on your kayaking adventure. Always observe weather and sea conditions before entering the water. Check the marine forecast for the East Santa Barbara Channel in advance and take time to talk with one of the on-island staff upon your arrival. While conditions may look calm and inviting, extreme weather conditions can be encountered at any time of the year, and the sea and wind conditions can become dangerous without warning. If, when evaluating the ocean conditions, you discover that it is already windy, the water looks choppy, and you see white caps on the water, even an experienced kayaker may find that their day will be better spent enjoying an island hike and put off kayaking for a better day. If you're out paddling and get caught in a sudden change of weather and cannot make headway back to your starting place, look for any beach where you can safely land. This is much better than drifting at sea and becoming lost or separated from your kayak in rough windy conditions. Using East Santa Cruz Island and Scorpion Beach as an example, the wind and waves typically come out of the northwest or west. If you're standing on the beach and looking out to the water, the pier on your left is due west, and looking at Scorpion Rock to your right is due east. During the normal prevailing conditions, it is recommended that you begin your paddle into the wind by heading to the west. Winds are often stronger in the afternoon, therefore morning hours can be a better time for kayaking. If you plan to explore sea caves, please do so with extreme caution. Take time to evaluate the action of the swells that can become more pronounced in the shallow water and narrow passages. Even on a calm day, an unexpected wave or swell can cause problems for you in a sea cave. If you are a novice kayaker, it is recommended that you use one of the approved guide services for your first kayaking experience in the park. Because there are many destinations to kayak within the Channel Islands National Park, it is important to check maps, 
read the on-site bulletin boards, and most importantly, consult with the on-island staff concerning the local conditions at the time of your visit. <laughs> Sharing the experience with a friend or a small group can add to the enjoyment of your kayaking adventure. Kayaking in pairs or a group can also provide an added measure of safety. It is also recommended that before you set out on a paddle, that you let somebody know your intended route and plan time of return. Before heading out, there are some essential paddling skills that you need to know and practice. For kayaking at the islands, you need to be skilled at launching and landing your kayak from a beach or from a pier. You should be able to paddle comfortably with a forward stroke, reverse stroke, stop, and manage turns. Some of the most important skills for open ocean conditions involve kayak re-entry, towing another kayaker, and balancing and stabilizing. The beauty of kayaking at Channel Islands National Park is the potential to encounter wildlife. It's important to remember to look and enjoy but not disturb. Rocky offshore islets and sea caves are essential habitat for seals, sea lions, and a wide variety of seabirds. Do not land or exit your kayak on offshore rocks or in sea caves. Because these islands are isolated and in a wilderness setting, it's important that you understand and practice the guidelines that we have just covered. Ultimately, your safety is your own responsibility. We hope you'll have both a safe and enjoyable experience at Channel Islands National Park.